25 minutes after 9 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Last week, Robin and I went to Chattanooga. We went to a convention, the National Association of Campus Activities, and uh, 90 plus percent of the people who were there were students or people representing schools. And the rest of us were either in entertainment in some form. I guess we were at the lower the lower end of the totem pole <laughs> in that yeah. regard. Anyway, we met this guy, and I was so impressed by him. His name is Jonathan Wolf, and Jonathan is the guy who made the sound, who wrote the soundtrack to the theme song to um, the move the uh, the TV show Seinfeld. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that famous baseline piece, yeah. Oh, and like two hundred fifty other shows, but <laughs> but I just wanted to give you a, a point of reference. So anyway, so we got to know him, and he was really fun to to hang out with, and. Um, I, I might have been a little starstruck simply because I'm always impressed by people who do cool music, Mm -hmm. you know, because music is my thing. But I wasn't really starstruck. I mean, he was just a normal guy. He was about our age, and we were kind of hanging out with him. Anyway, so he came and had lunch with us one day, and, and lunch at this event was in a big, gigantic ballroom. And everybody got the same thing. <laughs> yeah. And and, uh, and and you had these round tables. You just picked a, a, a chair and sat. And other people who you don't know would sit with you at your table, which was mm-hmm. kind of cool. You got to meet other people. So a young lady sat down with her mom. She was a student, and her mom was, I guess, just there with her. And um, when she found out that Jonathan had worked on Seinfeld, Mm-hmm. I mean, her eyes glazed over. Oh, yeah. I mean, she was, all of a sudden, you could tell the questions. And then mm-hmm. I thought to myself, he must get this all the time. Yeah. Like, all of a sudden, like, th- nobody's asking him about his work mm-hmm. <laughs> as a musician. It's all about the celebrities that he knows. And he, I heard people asking him, do you know Larry David? Do you know, uh, what's the guy's name, Kramer, the guy Richard, yeah. whatever his name is? Yeah. So anyway, of course he knows all of them because he worked Something with them forever. And he worked with Johnny Carson. So he had a whole lot. He could name drop a lot. Yep. And it it Michael occurred Richards. it occurred to me that we have a weird weird w- thing about us that for some reason because we know people from that little box in our in our homes called the television that we somehow are more impressed to get to know them in person. There's something about celebrity. You know, and I didn't even, I don't know when we booked our next guest, but this is very coincidental. Yeah, uh, it was before. It was before that. Yes. Okay, Dr. Michael Levy is on the phone. Oh, that's right. That's right, because we, we postponed him so we wouldn't miss the, the conversation with yeah. him. Okay. Dr. Levy, I can't wait to hear what he has to say. He's a psychologist. He's the director of substance abuse, uh, I'm sorry, substance use services at North Shore Medical Center in Salem, Massachusetts. He's a lecturer in psychiatry at Harvard Medical School, and his book talks about this very subject of our fascination with celebrity. Uh, celebrity and Entertainment Obsession is the title of the book. Do I have yes. it right? Yes. Uh, understanding Our Addiction. Dr. Michael Levy, good morning, sir. Good morning. Thanks for having me on your show. You're welcome. Where are you right now? I'm actually in uh, Andover, Massachusetts, a little north of Boston. Well, thank you for calling. I, I've often thought, be, because in this be- business here, Robert and I have... Like, like a, 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 a grain of sand worth of what it must feel like to be a celebrity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because this tiny little radio show in this tiny little town, every once in a while you'll we'll run across somebody who is a regular listener and they'll have that little starry-eyed look, you know? And we, we don't take it seriously because we know it's all over in, a, in the snap of a finger. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm wondering, I mean, the, the psychiatry behind all of this... Is it more about, I mean, does the celebrity get full of himself or herself as well as we become starstruck? Is it, is it a two-way street? Oh, I, I think it's absolutely the case. I mean, uh, there's been some work with celebrities, and certainly celebrities can, uh, you get public recognition, and people want to know you and are interested in your lives and want your signature or want a piece of your clothing. <laughs> right. It certainly augments, you know, your self-esteem. You feel like a special person. And while there could be a downside to being a celebrity because, you know, you lose your privacy, uh, there was actually a study that kind of spoke to celebrities. And, uh, you know, overall, do, do the pros outweigh the cons? And everybody said, yeah, absolutely, the pros outweigh the cons of being a celebrity. Really? So they certainly, yeah, they feel it, certainly. I mean, because all of us like, ooh, public recognition, and you know, to be known by other people. Right. Right. Do you know, Jack Larson died maybe a month ago or so, and Jack Larson played the role of Jimmy Olsen on the old Superman show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that, so that would have been in the 50s. Now, TV was brand new, and, and, uh, and he didn't really like his notoriety that he got from that role because he was an actor, and he, he liked stage acting, 
and TV was a new animal for him, but he, he didn't like getting on the subway and people saying, oh my gosh, you're Jimmy Olsen. It, it like really got to him. And it occurred to me that radio before that and TV being both very new must have, for the first time in human history, given people an opportunity to become famous for no real reason. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're right. I think in, in today's society, I mean, the media has an amazing ability to make an ordinary person into a somebody because automatically they get public recognition, and that can almost happen quickly or overnight. You know, in the past, someone would have a lot of goals or they accomplish certain things, and over time, uh, based on their accomplishments, they would get known and become, get some notoriety and some fame. Now it's very different because once you're, you're, you're in the, in the uh, media's eye and the limelight and you get that public recognition, automatically people have an interest in you. Because I think, I think a piece of that is that many people on some level would love to be famous, would love to be known. So people who attain that automatically are and, quote, idolize because they have what they want. You know, it's, it's a fascinating process, I think. But it's not always the good people that get this fame. It's, it's the bad guys, too, and they're embraced somehow, and I don't yes. understand that. Yeah, because I think, uh, I think a negative trend in society is uh, uh, fame has become so important, and that public recognition, because there are so many venues to do that, and I do think now some people, rather than what they do to become famous, the fact that they are famous is a reason in and of itself to like them. I mean, there are many people, I think, as you're alluding to, are famous for being famous and certainly for some negative things that they've done. And it just, it, But once you're in the limelight, people have an interest in you because I think it taps into that piece of us that, ooh, we would like to have this kind of fame and notoriety and become a, be, be a somebody, mm -hmm. you know? The, the Andy Warhol statement that uh, appears to be coming true that we all will have 15 minutes of fame. I mean, Facebook makes us all famous for 15 minutes in, mm -hmm. a, in a sort of kind of way. Um, you're absolutely correct. I think it, with, you know, you're living out of your, your little apartment, uh, you post things on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. or you know, There's so many ways to do this now. Yeah, Andy Warhol was right. Everybody's going to have their 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> so does that, does that water it down, though? In, in a way, I'm kind of sure. hoping it does. Because, you know, if I were to take a bicycle ride, Let's say on a beautiful day like today. It's beautiful here right now, and and, and I and I would to stop the bicycle and sit on the, a grassy hill. I could look around and say, you know what? All the money in the world and all the fame in the world wouldn't make this moment any better. Mm -hmm. mm. So I'm wondering if whatever fascination we as the the, the starry-eyed ones, not this, not the celebrities, but the starry-eyed, the rest of us, um, do we? Will we eventually get over this addiction be, because we'll be maybe jaded by it? Well, that's a, that's a great question. I mean, certainly in, in the end of the book, uh, the epilogue, I talk about, is there a way out of this? And uh, you know, one of my goals for writing the book was to wake people up a little bit and begin to look at the people who are starry-eyed, maybe look, look at themselves with a little different perspective. And, you know, when one... Uh, you articulated very well. I mean, uh, you know, there are certain things that are very important, just sitting and taking in a beautiful day. And, and I guess one thing I, I ask people a question is, so when, after you've lived your life, you know, what is really going to stand out? You know, was it you know, some celebrity you knew something about or, it, you know, or some you followed? Or might it be something else? And I would, I would hope... You know, maybe it would be something else when you really look back on your life, and uh, you know there are things that are more important than that. But uh, it's certainly uh, we're a media obsessed society, and yeah. uh, uh, it's certainly taken over. I mean, well, it's a giant motif in society. And and if I'm appearing to be um, one that's not affected by this, then I'm giving you a false idea about mm -hmm. myself because I I am the starstruck guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I am as much now as when I was younger, but I, I can tell you some. I, I can name drop a little bit, but and every single name I tell you will be a moment that I was starstruck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I, I I came to the conclusion at one time that. These the, the the celebrities that I might I wasn't stalking anybody, but if I saw somebody and you know they're out in public and I think oh I'm going to walk up to them and ask how you doing or give get an autograph or something, they don't really owe me anything. Mm -hmm. You know the the five dollars I paid for the record album by some recording artist or the the five dollars I paid for the movie ticket that's all. I, they gave me what I paid for. They they gave me that yeah. performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard not to get caught up in it because. Uh, 
You know, when someone again is on your TV screen, they're in your home. You think you get to know them, and you know they're on the big screen. Certainly, movie actors and actresses, and, and their faces are huge, and you get to think you know them. It's hard not to be caught up in this because you know one thing I talk about in the book is that there's certain you know, human traits that we all have, and that those have collided with kind of our current environment that we live in that, that has created this phenomenon. And, and everybody's human, and it's hard, you know, it, it, this kind of. Uh, celebrity obsession falls along a continuum, but it's hard to be totally divorced from it. It really is. Uh, one of, one of the uh, definitions of um, addiction is, is if something has uh, obsessed you to the point where it's interfering with your life, then it's yeah. a, then it's an issue. Is, is that what the book is helping us with? Is is if we ha- somehow have that kind of a thing with celebrity? Well, I think m- my goal of the book was to explain this. A phenomenon from a psychosocial historical perspective that how did how how has this happened and but when you talk about an addiction you're absolutely correct it's something a person does to the point that it might be hurting them and what I argue in the book is that our obsession with both being entertained and with the people who are doing the entertaining probably is hurting us on some level that's correct that that's a premise I make and uh, uh, and, and, and I, and I kind of support some research that seems to show this probably the case I think there might be other things people could do with their lives that might be over the, over the long haul much more fulfilling and, uh, and satisfying for them and from a another perspective it's not just the person that's enamored with the star's celebrity you've got businesses out there that as soon as a uh, star becomes a celebrity uh, fodder I guess you would say those businesses want to latch on to them, get them to be their spokesperson, so people will buy whatever product they have. You're absolutely correct, and many quote, celebrities have launched their own product lines, you know. Uh, people in, uh, in some of these companies have latched on to celebrities and are, are, you know, they're marketing a product. I mean, the celebrity might not know anything about the product, and but uh, absolutely people see the celebrities and mm-hmm. they're supporting this thing, so ch- I'm going to jump right in and, and kind of go for it, you know. Right. So how did this come to your attention to the extent that you are writing about it? Did you Do you have some patients who... <laughs> needed help with this? <laughs> no, Did you need more, help? <laughs> people don't come to me, hey, listen, I'm obsessed with celebrities. I want to see your doctor. Right now. <laughs> it's more, uh, I would, in, in truth, uh, you know, I'm a psychologist, as you know, and uh, I just like to understand how people think. And I cannot understand why people were so impressed with people who appear on TV, whether it's, you know, the, the winner of the Survivor Series or a reality TV star or the latest Bachelor or the Bachelorette, and I just couldn't make sense out of it. So, you know, and I wanted to really understand that because, again, I did not think it was the best trend in society, to be honest with you. So it was more just from a uh, academic point of view when I, when I, I said, i got to figure this thing out. I just don't understand it. And as I got into it, it just kind of began to kind of, for me, click for me, basically. And again, you know, I wanted to maybe wake people up a little bit so they could look at themselves from a, a little different perspective and say, hmm, is this the most important thing to me? Or, geez, could it be something else that would be better for me? Yeah. You know, you can put uh, a famous suit on and, and experience what it's like to be famous. I knew a guy who was goofy. In mm-hmm. uh, in Disney World, mm-hmm. and so so he's not famous, <laughs> but he puts on right. the goofy suit. He walks out into Disney World, and and everybody's all over him. He's famous. Yeah, that's right. It, isn't people, yeah, right? I, I bet you. The, I bet there are a lot of famous people who wish they could take off their famous suit. Yeah, yeah. Like, like David Letterman. It, there was a, a picture of David Letterman in some tabloid. Mm-hmm. He's got a face. He, his beard is almost like a, like the Duck Dynasty guys now. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Bushy eyebrows with his little boy. Yeah. No, yeah, there, there certainly is a neg- as we mentioned, there's a negative side to being a celebrity because you know you lose your privacy certainly, and uh, that can be down to I wouldn't know about it. I'm not a celebrity, but uh, certainly that, that's uh, obviously the case. But you're right when you said p- some people wear a goofy outfit and they feel really good. Uh, there's actually some research that shows when people even write about their favorite celebrities, it can make them feel good about themselves because they're like part of their world. It's kind of interesting. So is that a good thing? I, I'm, I'm trying to imagine this in, in, in a way. You know, you always hear the stories about the the the, the sick child. In, in the hospital and you know he's, he's, he wants his favorite baseball player to hit a home run for him mm-hmm. and, and then not only does he hit the home run but he shows up in the hospital room with the yeah. signed baseball right yes right it's, it's yeah and, and, and for certainly young children I mean they always have figures for identification you know and uh, it's nice to it can help shore up an identity and who you want to be and all this kind of thing but as you alluded to before, there might be some people, whether it's a baseball player or a football player or a movie actor, that maybe mm, underneath that surface might not be the best person to identify with. 
you know, if you really get to the real life, and, and, and that's the downside, really. So, uh, but is there is there a, pl- uh, a reason, a place for having some kind of for a young child to uh, be, be uh, uh, you know idolized over some kind of baseball star or something like that? Sure, I mean, there's a place for that, you know. But I think it's become the way I talk about it here. Just uh, I think yeah. it's gone way over the top. This is a fascinating yes. topic, isn't it? Uh, let's take so. a little break. Uh, Dr. Michael S. Levy is our guest. He is talking about his book called "Celebrity and Entertainment Obsession: Understanding Our Addiction." Fascinating topic. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Overall for Monday, looking partly sunny. Should be a nice day with a high of 82 to 85 degrees. Then on Monday night, clear skies, a low of 57 to 64. For Tuesday, mostly sunny, a high of 84 to 87 degrees. And Wednesday looks nice with plenty of sunshine for the middle of the week with a high of 84 to 87. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Evan Duffy. Central Florida Eye Institute is the area's leader in laser vision correction. From high-definition refraction surgery and LASIK vision correction to custom cataract, glaucoma, and diabetic treatment, you can count on Dr. Crowley and his effective, friendly staff to provide you with the quality care you deserve. Call 352-237-8400 for an appointment or more information. That number again is 352-237-8400. Looking forward to service your vision needs. Attention homeowners, if your sinkhole case was denied during the past five years or repaired, but there was little or no money left to finish fixing your property, you may qualify to receive up to $15,000 through a sinkhole repair management program in your area. This government program is offered to owners who feel that their sinkhole claim was unfairly denied or repaired, but there was little or no money left to finish fixing their property right. For a free inspection and consultation, call Sinkhole Savvy today at 813-403-7809. 813-403-7809. That's 813-403-7809. Sinkhole Savvy. Good credits, bad credits, it's none of our business because we're not an auto dealer. We're not a bank. We're not your mother. We're OcalaForSale.com, Marion County's marketplace for cars, trucks, and SUVs. We've got thousands of sellers standing by to take your call. No middleman. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSale.com. License and inventory change daily. Offer does not include dealer up charge. Undercutting rust proofing factory surcharge or delivery fee. See website for details. Do you have areas that have started sagging or drooping? Is what you're looking at not quite the same as it was years ago? Are there enhancements you've been putting off? Is there serious damage you need fixed? Then call on us, Damage Control Services. When your roof is sagging and the drywall is drooping after a storm, or your home just needs some enhancements, from damage repairs to new construction, Damage Control Services is here to help. 23 minutes after 9 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. By the way, this portion of AM Ocala Live is brought to you in part by Central Florida Eye Institute. Dr. Thomas L. Crowley is over there. He is a board certified up ophthalmologist and uh, he can take care of your eye care needs whether it's new eyeglasses or something um, more serious like diabetic eye treatments or laser surgery, LASIK surgery, uh, retinal surgery, all of those things taken care of at the Central Florida Eye Institute. They're not too far from where we're broadcasting from here at the Paddock Mall. They're on the Sears side just across the parking lot in the office complex over there at 3133 Southwest 32nd Avenue. So thank you Dr. Crowley and Central Florida Eye Institute. Dr. Michael Levy is on the Phone. His book is called Celebrity and Entertainment Obsession. Doctor, thank you for waiting through the break. No problem. Yesterday morning, I was tuned to this radio station. I wasn't here. I was in my car, and uh, there was a, a religious broadcast, and uh, the, the pastor making the sermon mentioned something about chasing um, riches and chasing notoriety. And, and I thought, wow, chasing notoriety. I, I don't think I've heard a pastor talk about this before. And and um, it's kind of the same thing we're talking about here. But but I, I think if show business is your chosen profession, then there's it's almost like a given that unless you're famous, you're never really going to make much money at it. That's true. That's absolutely the case, really. And, and many people, when you think show business... Uh, I mean, don't make a lot of money, and you think of people. I mean, there's TVs, there's movies, but people on the stage, for example, live theater. I mean, you never hear about them. Uh, but they're doing the same thing in some ways. But uh, you're right. Unless you get that public recognition, 
you're not going to make that much money. You're absolutely correct. It's, it's so so totally tied into that. Yeah. Uh, Rudy Giuliani was a, uh, a good leader for his city, but he really didn't come to the limelight across the nation and the world until 9-11. And then people would look at him as a celebrity because he had this uh, show of strength and a no-nonsense attitude about him. There must have been some people that were affected by his personality that changed their lives for the better and thought, yes, I can be a strong person, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I think when, especially in times like, like 9-11 or other kinds of crises, yeah, I mean, political figures, when they show strength and fortitude, people really uh, can identify with that and really, you know, follow them. And, and yeah, he did, obviously, in the presidential race, so he kind of, that was not, he did not sustain that uh, for whatever, whatever that was about. Well, and the whole Trump phenomenon right now. I mean, I mean, look at how how he's getting all the attention. Is he really saying the the most important things? Mm. You know, we could debate that, but but he's clearly getting the attention. Correct, because you know Trump again. He he does have a message that some people resonate with, but he is an entertainer. He's charismatic. And people like to be entertained, and you know, never know what he's going to say. He, and he says things to grab the limelight and the attention. Uh, again, I don't have a crystal ball, and who knows what's going to happen. But I think some of his charm is just being an entertainer, really. And the, uh, and there's a, a, a word called polentainment, which is the uh, mixture of uh, entertainment and politics. And at times, of, you know, like the debate and all this, it's almost like a, a contest, and who's going to win, who's going to have the knockout punch, and it's kind of really a blending of entertainment and politics at this point is, is, is fascinating. And then you have people like Justin Bieber who abuse their celebrityism. Yep, people do. That's correct. And uh, I mean, you see it all the time, but people still will get the attention. And I think you know, some of the negative stuff that celebrities do, and it does give them attention. Uh, and I think people really like to hear about that because... Uh, it helps them to feel better about themselves. You have someone like Justin Bieber or anybody who's really fallen. And you know, they have the riches, they have the looks, they have fame and all this. And when their lives go bad, a person sends, says, can say to themselves on some deep level, you know something, I don't even want their money, I don't even want what they have, their life is worse than mine, and I'm content with my own life. That's a, a theory called downward social comparison, where when we see people whose lives are worse than ours, it helps us to feel better about ourselves. And that's, I think, why... Some of their uh, uh, the celebrities' tragedies kind of get such attention, also. You know, there there is uh, artwork in museums that were created by artists who are super famous, but they were not famous at all in their own lifetimes. Mm-hmm. And the, and those paintings have become almost like celebrities. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, Vincent Van Gogh. I mean, but you know, I, mean, I know you're talking about probably newer people, but yeah, I mean, he was not known at all. Now look at him. <laughs> Yeah, and, and the same same thing with uh, who, who else was it? Oh, um, uh, Stephen Foster, the the songwriter. Yes. He died. Yes. He died penniless. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Probably one of the most famous songwriters ever, and yeah. and, and it's his yeah. songs that become famous. But but in their case, it's, there's no way you can really say, I, I want to associate myself with that song because it'll make me somehow. So you you could associate yourself with a, you know, an artist's painting, the Mona Lisa or mm. something. I yeah. guess. Mm. Yeah, hmm. I got her news. Do you know what I what I'm curious though is how as a psychologist this comes up in the office. Uh, could I be lying on your couch telling you, my gosh, I, I, <laughs> I can't get my brain off of Carly Simon or something? Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah that's funny. P- people don't usually. Uh, a lot of people who are obsessed with celebrities. Uh, when I talk to people, and it doesn't really come up in therapy, that's not why they see me, but they will say, oh, I love this, or I love that, and they're almost embarrassed to tell me about it. It's so interesting, you know? Uh, they say, oh, but, but I, I, I can't miss this show, or I have to watch this, or I love reading oh, yes. People magazine. You know, it's so, it's so interesting, and they almost feel guilty about it, but at the same time, it just grabs them in a way that they love to do it, you know? It's, it's so interesting, but usually, you know, people don't see this as a... Uh, you know, a huge issue they need to, you know, work out or anything, to be honest with you. I think I hear often people will resonate with, with, and will say to me, you know, Michael, I cannot believe why people do it. I mean, I don't know why people care about these people. And, and they're interested in, in similar way the way I was. Wow, really. wow interesting. <laughs> and, and you've explored it in the book. Uh, I have a copy of Celebrity and Entertainment Obsession by Michael Levy. Call me if you want the copy that was sent to us. It's a nice hardcover book and explores this topic in a way I've never yes. seen anybody do it before. Um, the rest of us have to go buy it. Uh, Doctor, how do we get the book? 
Okay, it's certainly available, obviously, through Amazon. Uh, some bookstores may have it, but generally they may have to order it for you. But I mean, Amazon or the website uh, Roman.com, Roman and Littlefield was the, uh, the publisher, really. But uh, I mean, Amazon's a great way. Okay. Doctor, thank you. That was a fun conversation. I wish we had more time. Yeah. We'll be, we'll be right back. American right. journalist Jason Rezaian, being held in Iran, has reportedly been convicted of espionage. The Washington Post bureau chief was detained along with his wife, who was also a journalist, and two photojournalists in 2014. The others were released. The bureau chief reportedly faces up to 20 years in prison. The U.S. and rights groups have strongly condemned the trial.